Hey guys, again, a question I had a couple, a couple of students ask me about. A uh, handbag contains seven coins and three keys. Two items are taken out of the handbag one after the other and not replaced. Find the expected number of keys taken out of the handbag. All right, so we, we need to create first, uh, understanding what's going on here, we need to create first a probability table. Anytime that you want to find expected value, uh, it's, it's very often helpful to start with the probability distribution table. All right. Now, one thing I, I do want to mention before I go into this is it does say one after the other, but even if they were pulled out of the bag at the same time, we would treat this exactly the same way. We would treat it as if one was pulled out and then the other. The, the fact of the matter is, you know, physically, it's impossible for you to touch both of them at the same time. Once you reach in, one of them is going to be touched a millionth of a second before you touch the other one. And even if it wasn't, the fact that you're touching one means that the other one cannot be the same one. Okay? So anytime that you have either two being done at the same time or one right after the other, it will both be treated the same way. All right? So we've got here seven coins and three keys. Okay? Now I'm pulling out of the bag twice. Now this to me seems like a very good situation for a tree diagram. All right. Now I'm going to label these. The, the question is expected number of keys. All right. So that's actually what I'm important, what I care about. So the three keys, the keys I'm going to label as K and the coins I'm going to label as not K. All right. Because that's all that's important right now. So the first event Either you pull out a key or you don't pull out a key, all right? Now, there are 10 objects in all, so the probability of pulling out a key is 3 out of 10, right? And then, of course, not key is that you pulled out a coin, but that would be 7 out of 10, all right? So that's the first object that you pull out. Now we're going to pull out a second object, right? Now, if I pulled out the first, if the first one was a key... Okay, the second one could be a key or it might not be a key. But remember, I've already pulled out one key, which means that now there are seven coins and two keys. So now the probability of getting a key is only two out of nine, right? The probability of not getting a key is now seven out of nine, okay? Now, I also need to look down here at the other one. What's the probability that I'm not going to key, key, not get a key first, but then I could either draw out a key or not draw out a key, okay? But in this situation, I don't have seven coins and two keys. The first time I did not draw out a key, I drew out a coin, which means now there's only six coins left. And because I did not draw out a coin, I now I still have three keys left. So in this branch, if I take this bottom branch down here, then first I don't get a key. Now I still have three keys left out of nine total objects. All right. And then the probability of not getting a key would be the six out of nine. All right. So now we're going to see what the different possibilities are. Right. You should already have an idea of what your probability table should look like. Right. So X could be Either I'll get zero keys, or one key, or two keys, right? Those are the possibilities, okay? Now, what are the probabilities of each of those events happening, okay? Well, the probability of getting no keys would be this one, if I draw no keys right there, right? And because these two branches follow one right after the each other, I can get that probability by going 7 over 10, times 6 over 9, and I get 42 over 90. And you can put it in just as 42 over 90 if you want. You're welcome to reduce the fraction if you feel that's helpful. I'm just going to go ahead and write in 42 over 90 for now, and I may reduce it later. All right. Um, so now uh, I need to know what's the probability of getting one key or two keys. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do two keys first because that's easy. There's only one way to get two keys and that's this one which would be 3 over 10 times 2 over 9. 
which gives me a total of 6 over 90. Okay. Now, last of all, I need to know what's the probability of only getting one key. Now, there's two ways to get that, right? One way would be to do this one right here, right? I could get a key and then not get a key. Or I could not get a key and then get a key. Both of these situations, both help me end up with one key. So I could do three over 10 times seven over nine. And then on the other one, it's seven over 10 times three over nine. And both of those give me 21 over 90. And I'm gonna add those two together because that's one path and then another path. Each of those, pa both of those paths will give me one key. So when I add those together, I'll get 42 over 90 okay now there was actually an easier way to do that right we know that there's 90 total possibilities and if you have 42 here and 6 here well that adds up to 48 so if you do 90 minus 48 the other 42 have to be in this category right here and sometimes that's easier especially if you have lots of different things it's easier to say well if I only have one left they all have to add up to one, which is 90 over 90. And so you can work through it that way as well. Okay. So what I have now is my probability table. Now to get the expected value, um, that's, that's actually, you, we're just going to follow the same process every time to get the expected value. So to get the expected value, we're going to take the first value, which is zero and multiply it by its probability, which is 42 over 90. And then we're going to add that to the next value, which is 1 times 42 over 90. And then we'll add that to the last one, which is 2 times 6 over 90. And we should be able to just add all those together. This one, of course, is going to be 0, because 0 times anything is 0. The next one is going to be 42 over 90. And the next one is going to be 12 over 90. And so 42 plus 12 would be 54 over 90. Now, I kept those the same. You'll notice that I didn't reduce these earlier. You can if you want, especially if they ask you to, you should. I didn't because, number one, it made this process e easier when I was trying to figure out the 42 in the middle. Secondly, once I have these probabilities here, I do want to be able to add them together, and it's nice to already have a common denominator. You'll see at this point, this being a final answer, I am going to reduce this one. I'm going to divide uh, both sides. I see they're both divisible by 9, so I'm going to try that first, which is going to be 6 over 10. And then those are both divisible by 2, so my final answer will be 3 over 5. Okay. So what is the expected number of keys taken out of the handbag? Well, 3 fifths or 0 0.6. All right. And you may say, but you can't pull out the 0 0.6 keys, Mr. Bywater. I understand that. But this is an expected number, which remember expected number is the average. So on average, how many keys you're going to pull out? Well, this is it. Just over half the time, you're going to end up with a key, right? So anyway, uh, that's the answer to this question. Uh, hopefully that is helpful. Uh, recognize how we used the tree diagram. We used the probability distribution table over here. Um, we changed the probabilities. That's one of the best, one of the main uses of the tree diagram is that the probabilities can be different for different legs because these are not independent events at that point. So that's, that's the question. We were able to get our final answer. This is how you get expected value. The value times the probability and you just add them all up and that should give you the total expected value of the whole thing. All right, so uh, hopefully that's helpful and uh, watch another one if you want.